Hey everyone, so today we're going to talk about the Dvorak and Colmac keyboard maps. So you may be wondering what the heck those are. Uh, basically they're alternatives to the QWERTY uh, standard home row keyboard that everyone uses basically. So some of the benefits of these other keyboard types are um, it's more efficient because your fingers have to move less and um, you know, it minimizes fatigue and it ultimately it can increase your words per minute or your typing speed. And a lot of people benefit from that. So um, let's just dive right into some of the differences and we'll go from there. So the Dvorak key map was created in 1936 and um, it basically rearranged some of the keys so that instead of being further away the the higher volume keys, the ones that you press more are on the home row um, which uh, which makes it so you, you have to move your fingers less. Uh, Dvorak also placed the vowels on the left hand side and the consonants on the right hand side that way when you're typing there's more of a what's the word? A, like a rhythm to it I guess so like you go back and forth um, while there's no studies that actually say this increases the speed or the efficiency, um, there are a lot of people who can attest that it, it has worked for them. So uh, I would definitely definitely recommend checking it out if, uh, if, you're, if you're interested. So the other one is the Colmac. Um, that was recently developed in 2006. Um, that one places even more emphasis on the home row by, by uh, placing even more keys there that are high volume. So it doesn't have the left-right uh, thing that the Dvorak had, but um, overall you'll move your fingers less with that, that keyboard setup. Um, so both of these languages have, not languages, keyboard maps have a lot of online support and a lot of free courses that you can actually take to learn them. Uh, if you're interested in doing it, I would recommend checking out one of those courses. We have them linked on the blog and in the YouTube description. Um, basically, when you're first learning, it's best to start. It's best to be really diligent and work hard for the first few weeks, and then once you get used to it, you know, um, you can you can sort of take a step back and just type normally how you would. And over the next few months, you can sort of expect uh, your typing speed to get up to your old levels and po possibly even surpass them. So, so yeah, if you're interested, I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, it's not for everybody, and it's hard to do if you work on a public computer or you go to the library, because a lot of the times it's not possible to change around the settings. And if you uh, if you have a a keyboard at home you can change around the keycaps so that it actually matches what you're typing which is nice but um, and if you're in a pub public place you can't do that so uh, definitely consider all that before making the switch so I personally want to try it out um, but since I go to work and I work on a work computer it's very difficult to, to do that but maybe someday we'll try it anyways have a good day